Okay, let's go live. James speaking. Um, I absolutely hate creating all of the text and all the additional stuff after the videos when I'm creating YouTube videos and also when I'm creating courses. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show you how something over the weekend changed yet again with ChatGPT that's going to allow us, I think, to not have to waste time with any of the text or any of the additional material that you usually do after creating a video when you're putting together a course. And what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about kind of creating a learning mentor or a learning assistant for the people that are watching your videos that replaces all of that text that we normally have to write out or organize. And I'm talking things about, you know, reference materials or uh, summaries, key takeaways, Q and A's and that kind of stuff that's dynamic that we're usually trying to regurgitate or put together based on a video that we've already done. And how does this fit in and where does it fit? I'm going to show you three examples in a minute. What I want to do is just explain so um, you understand kind of what the big difference is with this recent change at ChatGPT over the weekend, where it fits in to where I think we're going and how quickly this is happening. So if you've been following along on the channel, um, trainingsites.io forward slash join from a community. And again, just like and subscribe to the channel if you're here for the first time. But this whole idea of ChatGPT and these large learning uh, or large language models is if you get a prompt or you give a question or make a request of the tool, what it does is it looks back at all the information that it has been trained on and it gives you as close as it can an answer based on the information that it has. Um, and that's fine, except when we were first starting this and creating online courses and trying to do things, for example, where I had a video, I would give ChatGPT a prompt to try and give it me a, some, you know, a summary, which saves some time. But I, I think we're we don't even have to bother with that anymore with the new ChatGPT O3 uh, mini model. Now, if you're not familiar with it, I'll open up the screen so that you can see it, and maybe we can do it so I get this screen a little bit bigger. Let me just see if I can get that to go bigger because I haven't done this. There we go, a little bit bigger. Hopefully that helps. So here's the thing that you can do. If you have ChatGPT, I think it's available for free members. Um, in the paid one, you can see I have the option here on the left-hand side. Uh, I'm on the one now. This one is advanced in advanced reasoning. That's the one that I'm on. If you're on the paid version, I think there's an option at the bottom to have it as the O3 mini advanced one. So this is why this one is important. When you actually give a prompt with this model, it actually thinks before it responds to you. And I'll show you that in a second uh, as an example of how it happens. But think of it this way. If I give a, a request to this, what this deep research does is it goes and takes a look at the information that it has. It goes through the process it's going to follow. And then it kind of thinks, which are the pieces that are closest? Which are the ones do I need to use? What are the pros and cons of them? Uh, which one should I use to give my response to? It does that beforehand. Sometimes it takes a second. Sometimes it takes 15 seconds. But it's actually thinking just like a real person would. Then it gives the response based on what it was thinking. And then after that, it explains why it gave that response based on what it was thinking and the response it provided you. So this is far more impressive and I think it's that middle step on the way to having agents, what I've been talking about uh, uh, in some of the previous videos. And, and I was going, okay, great, that's cool, I get that. I get a little better answers, but what does it really mean to me? And uh, the other thing that came up in this, and when I was going through all the notes and playing around with this, the one thing that was interesting to me was there was this big focus on um, advanced reasoning and the other one, mini high, great coding and logic. And I'd seen a couple examples where they was talking about creating apps. And I thought, well, maybe I better find out what happens if I want to create an app for this with that. So what I did is I said, I'm playing around with the new O3 mini model and want to learn how to apply the reasoning to video and course content creators. Give me some ideas. And it went through a whole bunch of different ways that it might be able to help out. And this is the one that caught my eye right here. So interactive content creation. So I create a video, and I've been talking about this, about having your own data set or your own data to work from. Integrate the model as an on-screen assistant that can answer viewer questions in real time 
or during paused sections of a video course. This provides personalized learning experiences where the content adapts to the audience needs. And then scenario simulations were the other one. So I was playing around with that and I went, wow, um, every time I do a course, and in fact, I had a client this morning who is starting to add a help desk to their campus, their privately branded campus, and they're trying to put together the questions and answers and the pieces, not only for help desks, but also right within the particular courses. And it takes some time, energy, and effort. And you can go to tools like Notebook LM where you upload documents and it'll give it to you. But it still takes time to upload those documents, get the responses, see which ones make sense, and put them into your own campus. So I was playing around with that and I said, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if I could have each lesson and have something built into it that would automatically build the FAQs or answer the questions on based on the video that I actually had? So I don't have to put any notes in. I can just make it available. So what I did is I said, you know what? I'm going to do something like that. And uh, I asked for some specific use cases, came up with that one, and then I'll just do this one here. Um, so here's one I'll just open up. And again, I prompted this. All of these materials are available uh, at trainingsites.io forward slash join. So give me a specific example of dynamic Q&A integration. Implement that feature within your course. The model can provide instant answers to common questions during lessons, helping learners grasp difficult co concepts in real time. So that's what I put in gave me an example and I said I want to add it as a widget. I want it to be actually in the site and it coded it for me. So what did it end up coding for me? Well let's go take a look. I now have, we'll go and do a refresh on this one just so I can show you how it works. But I took the widget and I basically add it to the website and I now have an FAQ directly built in to each lesson. Now, there's three ways that this can work, and these are the ones that I want you to think about moving forward. So, if I'm in a video lesson, and it's a six minute long video lesson, maybe it's a recording of some kind of podcast that you did, or interview that you did, or a Zoom call, but it's a digital asset, it's a video that you have. A lot of times there may be questions or use case scenarios for the person learning that they might want to, well, how does this fit in? Or how do I apply it to this? Or what does this mean to me? We create a content, but there's an answer missing or something that that person wants that's personal to their situation that they would really like some clarification in. So I put this widget in, and if you look at it, you know, pretty simple, a simple example is this. So I'll just put in, uh, I've got this one set up as a demo. So let's say I put for a question, you know, how do I set it up so that I get uh, feedback? or customer feedback, for example. So I put it in, and this is actually thinking, and then it gives me a response. And the way that this widget is going right now is, this is the first one, this one simply, you put in a question, and it goes out to ChatGPT, and it gives you back a response based on this particular content. And I'm thinking, okay, that's great. Um, I appreciate giving a dynamic FAQ that kind of goes out and does stuff for me but it's still answering or getting the question from answer from ChatGPT, not from me, or where is it getting it from? So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I better change the Q&A widget. So I said, well, why don't we do it where we're gonna expand the answer that we get, and I also want it to give me references on where it got it from. So I updated it a little bit more, and what I did on this one is I said, you know what? I've got this particular video and it's about this topic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up here and I'm just going to do a, uh, let me do a question, we'll put one in. Let's say I wanna go, how do I price my online courses? And in fact, this was a question that I got inside uh, the campus, the trainingsites.io campus. So in this particular case, I'm gonna ask it and it's gonna do some thinking. And the, again, these are demos, right? So this one goes out to ChatGPT, but if you look, it also now gives me the references of where the response came from. So not only am I getting the ChatGPT answer, I'm also getting it where it based the references from. And I'm going, wow, that's cool. I don't have to really bother with that anymore because I can have these dynamic FAQs built into the videos as part of it. And I'm thinking, wow, really cool. What's the next step from this? Well. 
I'm building an education business. This one right here, for example, goes to Teachable Business Strategies and Thinkific, which are great resources, but I don't want to send my customers to another education company to talk about their answers to questions on my site that I'm trying to teach to people. So here's the next step that kind of puts this together. And this is the one I think that's really, really important. Let's say, for example, you have a big spreadsheet with a list of all of your videos that have been done on YouTube or all of your videos that maybe you put into uh, Vimeo, for example. Now, YouTube has the transcripts. Vimeo has the transcripts. They get automatically generated as part of those services. And in fact, let's say, for example, we're using some of the experimental tools at Google that actually can watch multimodal what's in the actual videos. And then we set up a widget like this, but what the widget does is it goes to look at that spreadsheet because we've talked it up. It goes to look at the YouTube channel. It goes to look at my Vimeo account, or even if I have something like a Notion account where there's a database and I've got all my workflow, all of my research notes, all of my own content, what about if that simple widget that I had and put something together like this, what if it only pulled from my own content and provided references to my own content? So this applies as if you've got a small business, a company, a big company, that data that you have is now available directly within the course and you've got a live agent that's able to go and search all of your data and provide responses in response to the questions that the people who are learning have in their unique situation. So you can do all sorts of clarification with that, which is really cool. It's going to save a whole bunch of time, energy, and effort for you, make it a lot easier to learn, but there's a little secret here, and I think that's where the next step is. So if you're playing around with this and you're going, okay, great, I have a lesson. It's still in my content. I'm putting it out. What about if we made it a little bit smarter? What if we said, you know what, uh, I'm going to watch how people are actually pausing the video, what they're skipping, what they're not skipping, what lessons they skipped, what order did they take the lessons in. What happens if that happens? How does that change everything? What does it mean to the person learning the way that they learn and the way that they come through the site for you? So I was just trying to think some of the areas that put them together uh, as an example of how they might um, go on this. Here, let me just do this one here. I'm going to show you, uh, I'll actually show you how this does the thinking. I did one here, um, and this is actually how I use it to do these videos. So I'm going to show you something. What I did is I put together this kind of, um, uh, you know, thing about putting it together here, and it was putting down that widget. It actually created the widget for me, and I'll show you how that actually gets added. But on this one, I asked it another question. I said, that works. Now, I'm using this as a demo of explaining how this will affect online courses and video tutorials. Can you first add 10 to 15 example questions and answers that a user may ask about a video lesson about creating online courses? The idea is when I demo it, it's going to be able to show the process or what happened if actually someone was watching the video. And you can see that this actually took 23 seconds. It didn't give me an answer right away, it actually showed me. I'm gathering simple questions and answers for a video lesson. So it went out and it actually did the research for me. It created a curriculum, pricing strategies, platform choices, so some of the things that might happen, putting the code together, crafting the function, so it's basically building the scripts and stuff into it, demonstrating it, formulating responses, engaging, optimizing, tracking success, and course outline and it gave me a brand new widget for it. And that widget is actually the one that is right here. That code is just cut and paste into here to add a widget. Now, I did this personally, but what if the LMS or this learning management software that you have has this built in? All of the tools are gonna to have this built in, so we're not gonna to have to do nearly the amount of work that we've been doing before because this one thing is a dynamic learning assistant, learning mentor that is gonna be directly attached to all of the videos, and here's where the magic comes in. If we're playing around with this, and I keep on going, I'll scroll in here just so a second. Um, 
Yeah, there we go. Just going to scroll through so we get to the place that I wanted to show you a bit further. Where is it? Okay. One more. You can tell I did a little bit of work on this one here. So I had an error with it and it fixed it up, which was kind of cool. The code fixed itself, so it was working. Okay. Okay. So here's here's the thing. If I have my own content and if it's on my own site and it can reply with answers that are from me, from my data, from my expertise, what I'm doing, what are the things that are going to happen with it? Well, here are the ones that are going to happen with it. If you go and right now you're creating a FAQ with your courses or writing text for a summary or a script, what happens is you have to put it together and you have to guess on common questions that you get or you go back and look and say, what are some of the common questions that I run into uh, on a regular basis? So sometimes that's static, you know, you fill it in. Sometimes it's based on the text. You have text answers that someone has to search and it goes to your FAQ of information that you have available. And what happens on this one is, let's say, for example, the widget could monitor user behavior on the page. For example, if a user scrolls through a video tutorial or lingers on a certain section of the content, the system can proactively suggest questions, answers, points, examples, case studies. So this isn't just the user prompting. This is actually the website prompting or the learner saying, hey, are you having trouble with this? These are some of the questions that may apply to where you are in the video or on the screen. It can look at all of the background information and give some answers. Time delayed pop-ups, smart pop-ups, auto completion, implementation ideas. So it would be able to, you know, on a page load, anyone browsing, not browsing, stopping, finish, all of this stuff is now going to be automatic. And I don't think we're going to have to worry about, did I write enough text or key elements or snapshot of it? The video in many cases are going to be enough. The widget, if somebody even doesn't even watch the video, it's going to give you the FAQs of the questions based on where they are in the video and what they missed. If someone wants to do the, you know, too long didn't read or too long didn't watch situation with the video, they're going to be able to put the questions in about the topic that they think. And the widget's going to be able to tell what the things are that were in the video that maybe they didn't think about or didn't consider. This is a really exciting time for everyone. I think if you're creating courses and you're playing around with this, there's a little change you have to make internally. And that's the first thing is how do I create my content so that is it's uh, consumable as part of a learning assistant or a learning mentor that's going to help it. Our job is to create Lego blocks, as many Lego blocks as we can to let the people learning it or consuming it to basically build whatever they want to build with the blocks. The mentor, the AI thing, is the thing that's going to be able to go, hey, have you ever considered putting these seven blocks or these 30 blocks together? Or did you know that there's 10 ways to do it with these blocks and 12 ways to do it with these blocks? They both have strengths and weaknesses, and you should maybe pick one, or here's why you would want to pick one or why you don't want to pick one. This is exciting stuff for us, and I think it's only going to get more exciting, and it's happening quickly. This is the first week of February. I think it was the 31st or 30th of January 2025 when they announced this 03 mini model. It's going to get even faster as we create this content. So don't get left behind. So if you haven't already, join trainingsites.io forward slash join. Like and subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And in the next video I'm going to do a little bit later this afternoon, I want to show you a really cool thing that I did with aistudio.google.com where I actually got it to play a board game. So take care, expect the best. We'll be back shortly with another great video to help you start, build, and grow your education business.